Hey, welcome back, I'm Lai. Elon recently kind of confirmed the final design of BFR, which is super exciting. Some really interesting changes were dropped. So let's talk about it today. And most importantly, I would like to share with you guys some of my perspective as to what changes are important, what changes simply aren't. First of all, let me start with something exciting. After the update, BFR will officially become the biggest rockets humans have ever built. Standing at 118 meters tall, it will be two stories taller than the previous record holder, Saturn V. This will also give the new BFR 1,000 to 1,100 cubic meters pressurized space for its passengers. To give you some perspective, the biggest cargo airplane we have ever built, the Boeing 747, has only a pressurized volume of 850 cubic meters. What's more impressive about the updated BFR is its capability. 100 metric tons to the low Earth orbit, 100 metric tons to the Moon and Mars with orbital refueling. This seems counterintuitive at first, but it's precisely the benefit of BFR's rapid reusability. After reaching the orbit, booster section of the BFR will land on Earth and relaunch with a fueling tank to refuel the Big Falcon spaceship. This also means that with fuel depots on the moon on Mars, BFS will be able to go even further into the deep space if it wanted to. Without reusability, none of these will be possible. Secondly, by far the biggest change to the new BFR is the way it flies and lands. Comparing to previous designs, it now has two forward actuated fins and two rear actuated fins. What that means is that BFR will now have flaps of wings that moves while it's attempting to land. Some kind of acrobatics if you ask me. This also presents tremendous challenges to SpaceX in the next few years. As you can see from the simulation, with a new design, BFR will try to reduce most of its energy aerodynamically with those moving fins and with its heat shield. This means more engineers at SpaceX must figure out a way to move fins that waste tons with precision. Once most of the energy is removed, BFS will land propulsively as usual on those two rear actuated fins and an additional landing lag that looks exactly the same. Elon also mentioned briefly that the third fin is merely a landing lag and nothing more. Because of this, I would also like to predict that SpaceX will need a lot more material engineers in the coming years to work on its heat shield. So if any one of you guys want to work for SpaceX, now you know what courses to study in college. As for funding, it is in my opinion the shakiest part of BFR's business. SpaceX will try to fund the R&D at BFR with launch money, which includes International Space Station resupply missions and commercial satellite missions, Starlink money, this constellation of satellites SpaceX wants to build, as well as private moon tour money. With NASA redirecting its resources to moon missions, SpaceX might be able to make more money through that too. But at the end of the day, the honest truth is, BFR is too powerful for the market right now. Most space missions we can think of can already be done by Falcon 9. So to make BFR a reality, it is Elon's as well as our responsibility to find a viable business model for super heavy lift launchers like the BFR. Currently, SpaceX only spends 5% of its resources on the development of BFR, which is understandable because SpaceX's priority for now is Crew Dragon and keep our astronauts safe. Another really interesting change that was pointed out by our friend Team Doubt, the everyday astronaut, is that the current design of BFR has an 88 cubic meters on pressurized cargo compartment, and because of that, the BFS we were shown has only sea level engines for now. You can tell by the smaller nozzles, but according to Elon, they could be easily swapped for vacuum engines by removing the unpressurized cargoes. Super interesting stuff. If you want to know how those two types of engines differ, I've made a video on it a while ago. I'll link it. Lastly, I want to commend Yusaku Maezawa for making this bold decision to become the first private citizen to travel to the moon. It's going to happen in five years or more, but I'm sure it's worth the wait. It's going to be beautiful, and that Dear Moon video, super inspiring. So, congratulations. Overall, the new updated BFR is absolutely majestic. It's still in the early phase of development, so as SpaceX fans, we're going to have to be patient and wait for the final product. There might be changes coming along in the future, but according to Elon, he's confident of the current design and very possibly this will be the final design of BFR and no major changes will be made in the future. The testing of the Big Falcon spaceship will begin as soon as the end of 2019, so this schedule is very inspiring as well. The only reservation I had for BFR is its funding, whether or not we can create enough opportunity and demand to utilize it. 
As I said in the video, BFR might simply be too powerful. I mean, it's not a bad thing to be too powerful, of course, but if you look at the payload SpaceX is sending with Falcon 9 currently, none of them, I mean, none of them are above 10 tons. That is not even one tenth of BFR's capability. So at the end of the day, it's up to you and I, and also the satellite companies and NASA to take full advantage of BFR. And when that happens, I'll be super happy, I'm sure. All right, thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to follow me at Lay Creatives. As always, I'm Lei. I'll catch you guys later.